this evening. First, Ghana boosts its defense capabilities with a historic U.S. $16 million deal. Two new advanced helicopters from Bell Textron are on the way. We'll delve into how this agreement with the U.S. will strengthen national security and support critical missions. Plus, a new $2 billion water treatment plant is set to transform Region 5. Hear how this massive project will improve access to treated water for over 14,000 residents and raise living standards across the region. Also, chaos on the road in Region 1. Faroz Khan faces multiple charges after a dangerous high-speed altercation with the police. We have the full story on the traffic violations, assault claims, and his upcoming court appearance. And a shocking case of theft in Demerara. An electrician has been sentenced to a year in prison for stealing streetlights from the LBI housing scheme. Details on how police recovered 24 stolen lights and brought him to justice. Finally, outrage in South Africa. Three men accused of killing two women searching for food appear in court. We'll take a closer look at the case that's sparking national outrage over poverty and violence. This and more coming up on tonight's Headline News Update. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for October 3rd, 2024. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. First up, Farouz Khan, a driver from Hosororo Region 1, is set to face several charges after a late-night altercation with the police on September 29, 2024. According to the Ghana Police Force, Khan was arrested following an incident along Hosororo Road where he overtook a police vehicle at high speed and drove in a dangerous manner. Police officers on patrol reported that Khan appeared to be under the influence of alcohol and resisted arrest when informed of his traffic violations. During the incident, he allegedly assaulted two officers, damaged police property, and refused a breathalyzer test. Khan will be charged with dangerous driving, failure to take the prescribed test, assaulting peace officer, resisting arrest, damaged the property, and disorderly conduct. He is scheduled to appear at the Mabaruma Magistrates Court. The police have emphasized that no force was used against Khan during his arrest and the incident was documented for review. Continuing our coverage on cases in the courts, an electrician has been sentenced to one year in prison after pleading guilty to stealing streetlights from the Laban Intention Young Professional Housing Scheme on the east coast of the Marara. 34-year-old Sharma Jones of the Pleasant Squatting Area was apprehended by the police following complaints made by residents during an outreach by Minister of Housing and Water Colin Kroll and the Central Housing and Planning Authority. The report highlighted the disappearance of street lights from the housing scheme. Jones admitted to stealing the lights and installing them in various locations. The police were able to recover 24 stolen street lights during their investigation. He was subsequently charged with simple larceny and appeared before Magistrate Gibbs at the Sparana Magistrate's Court, where he pleaded guilty and was sentenced to one year in prison. Ghana has signed a historic $16 million US dollars contract with Bell Textron Incorporated to acquire two advanced rotary wing aircraft. The agreement, signed on October 2, 2024, aims to enhance the operational capability of the Ghana Defense Force and strengthen security cooperation between Ghana and the United States. The contract includes comprehensive training and maintenance support from Bell Textron, ensuring the Ghana Defense Force can maximize the aircraft's benefits for years. The new helicopters will be deployed for search and rescue missions, disaster relief, and border security operations, blustering Ghana's ability to respond effectively to emergencies. Senior Minister within the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance, Dr. Ashwin Singh, emphasized that this investment will modernize the Ghana Defense Force and improve national security. U.S. Ambassador to Guyana, Nicola Terra, highlighted that the agreement reflects a strong bilateral relationship and shared commitment to regional safety and stability. The acquisition also marks a continuation of Ghana's long-standing relationship with the Bell brand, which the Ghana Defense Force has used since the 1980s. The new aircrafts are expected to significantly enhance the Ghana Defense Force's rotor ring capabilities and support various critical missions nationwide. 
Stick around when we return. $27 million block commission at West Demerara Secondary School and Saul Group partners with ExxonMobil to launch mobile fuels in Guyana. currently conducting a national registration exercise. Who can register? Anyone who will be 14 years or older by December 31, 2024, and is a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, naturalization, or is a citizen from a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more. It is the civic duty and legal responsibility of all persons who meet the eligibility requirements to apply for registration. By doing so, you will be ensuring that you are issued a national identification card and be included in the official lists of electors for for future elections, providing you meet all eligibility criteria. This registration exercise will end on November 29, 2024. For further information, contact GCOM on 2250-2779 or visit the website www.gcom.org.gy. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for doing surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fractured my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get you. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisim's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Sneak away with the gift of sight from modern optical services. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Come small to make fashionable faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Modern Optical Services, 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226-1082. Welcome back. The Saul Group has signed an agreement with ExxonMobil to become the licensee for the mobile brand in Guyana. Effective October 1st, 2024, Saul's network of 11 service stations will begin offering high-quality mobile fuels as they transition to the mobile brand. This marks the first time that drivers in Guyana will have access to mobile synergy fuel, which promises better engine performance and fuel efficiency. Mark Gold, Vice President of Commercial Business Lines and South America Operations at Salt, highlighted that partnering with ExxonMobil is a strategic move to deliver premium fuels through a modern, innovative network. Saul Guyana's general manager, Earl Carbon, expressed excitement about introducing this advanced technology to the local market, which he believes will position mobiles as the leading fuel brand in Guyana. Moving on, a new $27 million building has been officially commissioned at West Demerara Secondary School, Region 3, to provide a better learning environment for sixth form students. The two-story structure features five large classrooms and essential amenities, creating space for approximately 150 students. Currently, 33 students are enrolled in the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination studies at the school. 
During the commissioning ceremony, Minister of Education Priya Manik Chan encouraged students to fully utilize the resources provided to excel academically. The minister also announced plans for the school, including the construction of a swimming pool and a multi-purpose court to expand recreational opportunities. Additionally, several new secondary, primary and nursery schools are expected to be built in Region 3 to accommodate the growing student population and reduce long commutes. We're looking for land to build a new secondary school at Reed and Hoop. So in about two years time, in about two years time, we're going to have all the secondary schools we need right here at Region 3. To the point where we won't have children or we ought not to have children traveling from far to get to a secondary school. Minister Manik Chan emphasized that these developments will ensure that Region 3 has all the necessary secondary schools within the next two years, enhancing educational opportunities for students in that area. In other news, the construction of a new $2 billion water treatment plant at Bath, Region 5, is set to begin by the end of 2024, benefiting over 14,000 residents from village number 7 to Kingsley. Minister within the Ministry of Housing and Water, Susan Rodriguez, announced the development during a community meeting at Cotton Tree Primary School, noting that the plant will provide treated water to 43% of the region as part of the Coastal Water Treatment Infrastructure Program. The project, funded by the Caribbean Development Bank, is expected to be completed within 18 months. This is funded through the Caribbean Development Bank to the tune of $2 billion. Once that treatment plant is completed, it will service 43% of this region with treated water. Additionally, rehabilitation of the Cotton Tree Water Treatment Plant is on track for completion by December enhancing portable water access for 15,000 residents between Number 6 Village and Ithaca. Upgrades are also ongoing at several smaller plants, ensuring improved water quality and service levels across Region 5. Once all projects are finalized, the region is projected to achieve 100% access to treated water, significantly improving living standards for its residents. Don't go away after the break. Argentina University funding cuts Staff and students march across the country and calls for de-escalation amid Israel's response to Iran missile attack. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, yeah. Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for do a surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money. You should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Modern Optical Services. Three sixteen Mill Street, Georgetown. Telephone two two six one zero eight two. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Riverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Fans of thousands of university staff and students in Argentina are protesting against drastic cuts to funding for higher education. The austerity measures are part of President Javier Malay's plan to slash public spending and control inflation, Al Jazeera's Daniel Schrimmler reports. 
At universities across Argentina, both staff and students say they are engaged in the battle to save public education, which is free and generations of Argentinians are proud of. These cuts diminish the quality of our education we offer in our public universities, which we've always given, which is recognised around the world. Some universities say they cannot pay their electricity bills and staff wages have slumped, leaving many on or below the poverty line. This is the second major protest after hundreds of thousands took to the streets in April. We believe that a country needs to have educated people. It's very important to advance and develop. I'm a professor. I believe that our education will save our people, will save our country. President Javier Millet took office last December, promising to cut public spending and bring the Argentinian economy, with annual inflation at 230%, under control. He believes universities cost too much. They're not just demonstrating here against budget cuts. Many fear for the future of the free and much respected university system itself. A system often denigrated, sometimes angrily, by President Javier Millet. With the two sides barely talking and the protest growing, education is now at the heart of opposition to the Millet government. Daniel Schweimler, Al Jazeera, Buenos Aires. Three men accused of killing two black women in South Africa have appeared in court. The women were shot while searching for food and their bodies were hidden in a pigsty. The case has ignited public outrage, highlighting the extreme poverty millions of South Africans face daily. Al Jazeera's Haru Matassa reports. These are the three men accused of killing two black women on a farm in Limpopo province in northern South Africa and then trying to hide the bodies in a pigsty. The women were collecting expired dairy products that had been dumped when they were shot and killed in August. Other people would trample upon the weak, kill them and still come to court and show no remorse because it's like nothing has happened that is unusual. And, and, and the church has risen up to say no, no to bail as well. The case has again raised issues of poverty, unemployment and racial tensions. We uh, strongly believe that uh, these three accused must not uh, receive bail as uh, this has shocked and angered the community and it has a potential of disturbing uh, the peaceful community. The killings have reminded South Africans about the high levels of inequality and the plight of farm workers. The South African Human Rights Commission has urged members of the public to stay calm. The three accused face charges including murder as well as the possession of an unlicensed firearm. The men deny the charges. They will remain in custody until their next bail hearing on November the 6th. Harumutasa Al Jazeera, Polokwane, South Africa. Israel's Security Cabinet has confirmed it will respond to Iran's missile attack, heightening tensions in the region. International voices, including those from the UN, are urging rapid de-escalation to avoid further conflicts. Al Jazeera's Gabriel Alonso reports. 1,700 people have... At an emergency meeting of the United Nations Security Council, the Secretary General said de-escalation is imperative. Civilians are paying a terrible price which I utterly condemn. It is absolutely essential to avoid an all-out war in Lebanon, which would have profound and devastating consequences. In a meeting that lasted nearly three hours, Iran and Israel both defended their actions. Each act of restraint taken by Iran has only emboldened Israel to commit even greater crimes and more acts of aggression. Consequently, Iran's response was a necessity to restore balance and deterrence. Israeli must understand that each act of aggression it makes is not unpunished and will be met with consequences. The time for empty cords, for de-escalation is over. How can you do that? To equate Israel, a nation simply wishing to live in peace, acting in defense of its people with an aggressor bent on our destruction is not just wrong, 
It is a grotesque and immoral distortion of reality. Lebanon called for implementation of the 2006 Security Council resolution that demanded a demilitarized buffer zone in the country's south. People of Lebanon and the government of Lebanon reject the war. They want the implementation of Resolution 1701 with all its provisions. Also, Israel's foreign minister declared Secretary General Antonio Guterres persona non grata, barring him from visiting Israel accusing the Secretary General of being a supporter of Hezbollah, Hamas, and Iran. The Secretary General did not publicly respond to the ban, but his spokesperson did. Which we see as a political uh, statement by the foreign minister, and just you know, one more um, attack, so to speak, on UN staff uh, that we've seen uh, from the government of Israel. La séance est levée. As the meeting ended, council members find themselves in the same position as much of the rest of the world, waiting for what Israel will do next. Gabriel Zondo, Al Jazeera, the United Nations in New York. This brings us to the end of the regional global news coverage. Up next is the three weather forecast. And that's it to be two headline news for this Thursday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow at 6 30 a.m. for a rebroadcast and at 5 30 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other. Bye.